India is one of the largest automotive market and manufacturers in the world. And despite this, experts opine that we have barely scratched the tip of the iceberg. The opportunity that is yet to come, not just from car makers, but the ancillary companies, the EV industry, all indicate that perhaps the best is ahead. And with this thought, SBI Mutual Fund is happy to announce the launch of the SBI Automotive Opportunities Fund. I'm Sumera Abdi, and with me is the fund manager of this new auto fund, Tanmay Desai. Hi, Tanmay. Thanks very much for joining in. The first thing I want to ask you is that, you know, for an investor who's watching this, what is the appeal of the auto sector? I think uh, automotive industry is an excellent uh, proxy to play the India growth story. And the two factors uh, that appeal the most to us are the underpenetration across vehicle categories as well as uh, the affordability factor. Uh, when we talk about the underpenetration uh, across vehicle categories in India, uh, the market is quite underpenetrated. Uh, and a comparison uh, that we can do uh, uh, of India versus some of the other economies uh, like China and South Korea suggests that today India is where uh, they were just prior to the hypergrowth phase. Uh, at the same time, when we are comparing the per capita disposable income, it has grown much faster than the pace of growth of the realization both across passenger cars as well as across the two-wheeler segments, uh, clearly indicating that the affordability factor is far better today, uh, not only allowing the consumer uh, to uh, uptrend in terms of uh, his purchase, but also allowing uh, the, uh, uh, the auto, uh, um, automobile company uh, to do business in a far better fashion. So basically, people are earning more and they're buying more expensive cars, right? Correct. Okay. But uh, even this whole automotive theme, how are you looking to play it in its entirety? Right. So, you know, when we, when we think about automotive, uh, there are four broad buckets for us to highlight within which we see the opportunities to evaluate companies and invest. The first is the original equipment manufacturers, which are OEMs, and that comprises of uh, all the vehicle categories, which is two-wheelers, passenger cars, as well as commercial vehicles and tractors. Uh, he, within this, uh, we try to strike a fine balance uh, between the long-term growth opportunity in the sector as well as try to play any cyclical uptrends if there are. Uh, the second bucket, of course, is the auto component uh, space uh, where we see tremendous opportunity simply because the component guys are not only exposed to a single OEM uh, but number of OEMs number of segments, number of components, as well as number of technologies, offering a very diversified and a high growth opportunity for companies to grow. Uh, the third is, of course, the EV ecosystem. Uh, the EV ecosystem is coming up pretty nicely uh, in India as, as we speak. There has been quite a bit of government support out here uh, in terms of uh, schemes like FAME as well as PLI. And we are observing the penetration levels to kind of increase in the AV space. Uh, lastly, uh, uh, I would like to talk about the export opportunities. Today, uh, the competitiveness of India on a global landscape has significantly improved. The labor cost, the power cost, is lower in India than some of the developing as well as developed economies. The raw material procurement is also better in India today. And importantly, the regulations uh, in India on the automotive side is at par with what it is globally, thereby allowing companies to invest on a larger scale, not only to cater to the domestic opportunity, but also for the ex export opportunities. So you don't have to set up plants entirely for exports separately, right? right. Now it's a, a combined model. But uh, you know, this is not a new theme, right? India has been an auto lovers and you know, auto manufacturing market for so long. So why now? I mean, why should an investor look at putting money in the auto theme today? Right. So, uh, you know, I, I would uh, try to draw a parallel back to the first point which I made where today India is uh, where 
uh, some uh, you know where uh, china south korea were in fact some of the even developed economies have had a super uh, growth phase uh, to kind of give a one particular uh, example is the phase of 1985 to 1996 where uh, uh, the uh, South Korea market on the passenger vehicle side had a growth of 18 percent and at that moment uh, at the start the per capita income was at around two and a half thousand dollars precisely what it is in India at this point in time. Uh, you know there is no particular right or apt time to invest in the automotive space and uh, this there is there is proof in uh, you know uh, the returns that uh, the uh, broader indices within automotive space uh, which has delivered 18 percent CAGR over the last two decades and we can break that into various time frames and it has delivered very good uh, you know returns. So, if, if one does have uh, you know uh, the, uh, uh, this, the scope to remain invested for a, a longer period of time then one can very beautifully capture the various cycles within the automotive space. Understood an idea whose time has come. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, we know that this is a thematic fund. We mm -hmm. know it will be actively managed. Mm -hmm. And we know that you're looking at bottom up stock selection. Mm -hmm. But besides that, what is your investable universe? Right? right. How exactly are you going to narrow down stocks? Right. So, uh, uh, the way we have computed the uh, universe uh, broadly comprises of around 130 to 135 stocks. Uh, about 20 of them are the original equipment manufacturers and more than 100 are uh, the auto component guys or the other addressable you know subsectors in which we can invest in. Uh, uh, speaking about uh, stock selection as you as you rightly pointed out uh, there is a uh, bottom up approach to it uh, but uh, we will have a top down approach to catch the economic trends and the penetration levels for the various sub segments in the in the right context uh, and within that we will tend to have a bottom up approach where we tend to select companies which have high growth potential which have the ability to build brands both on the OEM side as well as on the ancillary side companies which are able to adapt to the evolving you know auto landscape which has been changing quite dramatically with the way we have seen uh, you know the EV penetration and the other uh, technologies along with uh, the basic hygiene that we have of selecting companies with good earnings quality, uh, good cash uh, flows as well as uh, uh, the healthy return profiles. Okay and you know that may how uh, uh, investors have expectations from their fund managers what is your expectation from investors, right? I mean, what is an ideal time horizon that you think an investor should, uh, you know, remain invested here? Right. So, when we look at the various, uh, you know, sub-sectors, uh, some of them are more cyclical in nature and some are less and much more secular in nature. Uh, but, a, uh, uh, but the correct answer to your question is an investor should look at trying to capture uh, the uh, you know the various cycles within the automotive space and in that context we believe a minimum of three to five year kind of a time horizon is critical essential for investors to kind of capitalize on the promise that the sector has in the medium to long term. Yeah and preferably always longer right. Yeah. All right and may all the very best thanks very much. Thank you. The NFO will remain open between 17th and 31st of May. You can start your investment with a monthly SIP of 500 rupees and a minimum lump sum application of 5000 rupees. Do remember to contact your investment advisor or mutual fund distributor for more information on this new fund. Thanks for watching and happy investing. Mutual fund investments are subject to market risks. Read all scheme related documents carefully.